time to start this game. Uh, came down double digits, 14 out of 18 times since Christmas. But uh, I know we keep asking us, you know, like, how do y'all keep on this down double digits? Please address this. <laughs> what else you got, Lost? All you got? No, I'm not messing with Law today. Uh, Eric said that Jimmy's going to warm up the interest in playing throughout the year. I guess he's been in the league almost a decade or so. Uh, how have you seen Jimmy's game evolve, or what have you seen him getting better at? Um, I think passing. I think um, since he's come down here and just, you know, normal guys going to be on the floor, making guys better. Uh, we do the score and defend, but um, his passing ability, like I said, is off the charts. And I think surpassing LeBron for the most triple doubles in Miami, you know, Miami history. So um, he's really doing a good job of making his teammates better and involving everyone else on the floor. What have you seen from him that's different from what you saw from him since Jimmy did play that game? Um, like I said, they're number one in the East on their tough team. I think, um, you know, defensively, you know, that's what they keep. That's what they keep teams off balance. I think, you know, playing zone, playing man, um, doing those different things. But when they get healthy, you know, they have a tough team. You know, we forget they still got, you know, Marquise sitting over there and still have Oladipo. So um, they're a deep team. And like I said, Spoles, you know, one of the best coaches in the league. And so he's always going to get his guys ready to play. And they're going to be ready to perform every single night. Good. How are you? What's up? Um, I think it's the guys that we have on our team, you know, just um, their mentality, um, the way guys are playing. Um, and we've been used to it, you know, with Kawhi and PG being out um, last year and the year before that, um, just being whoever's on the floor is going to play hard and compete every single night. And so every night we step on the floor, we think we have a chance to win a game no matter who's playing. And um, that's just kind of the culture we're trying to set and trying to build around here. Coach, uh, Eric Spolter is very Um, I think our guys being able to adjust, you know, um, every game is different. You know, um, you never know um, if, a, if a player like Jimmy Butler or Hero is going to be on fire. So you want to blitz, if you want to take it off, if you want to switch. And so our guys have really been locked in defensively of understanding what we're trying to do and when we make adjustments. And so um, that's probably been the, pretty much the key, you know, I guess with PG and Kawhi being out, just being able to adjust more and do different things. I mean, he's been pretty good. You know, I think defensively, you know, he's been really good for us. And that's what he, you know, last year and the year before that, just, you know, getting on the floor and being able to guard, you know, different different combinations, different players, one, two, three, and four. And like now I think offensively, just attacking the basket, making plays out of pick and roll for himself or other guys. And he's shooting the ball, you know, really well. So um, he's doing a lot of good things. And I mean, if it was one thing, I really couldn't, I couldn't really pick right now. With, with guys like that, that young, saw a lot of room to, to go. Well, I mean, it's natural to him already. You know, he just hasn't been in that position. I think being on the floor with PG and Kawhi and guy who's going to have their ball, have the ball in their hands a lot last year and the year before that, he really had a, a chance to make those plays. But now being shorthanded, you know, we have to do a lot of different things. You know, Amir's handling the ball and picking rolls, posting zoo more. And so we're just doing different things to try to, you know, score the basketball. Sorry, Donald, since he's mentioned that. Yeah, I think um just understanding what we need him to do, um, what, we, what we try to ask him to do. And like I say, he's very talented, you know, a great defender, can guard one through five. Um, and then, but also rebounding the basketball, pushing and attacking in transition, making plays for other guys because he can really pass the basketball. And so um, his slot cuts, um, cutting behind the defense when teams are, you know, loading or turning their heads. And he's just been doing a great job. The biggest thing, like I said, is rebounding the basketball and pushing in transition and making plays for other guys. Let's take a few from Zoom. Uh, BT, Miriam, then Tomer. Hello, Coach Tyloo. How you doing, BT? I'm doing great, man. 
when your team is as depleted as it is, so shorthanded, are you able to gauge what kind of team you guys have playing someone like Miami? Or is it all about you guys just competing all the time? I think the biggest thing when you're shorthanded, you just got to compete and play hard, you know, and our, our margin for error is very slim. We understand that. So, you know, we got to do a better job. I think defensively, um, you know, we had a couple of games where teams scored, but the biggest thing is finishing and rebound BT. Uh, we, we doing, we doing a good job playing half court defense, but teams are getting offensive rebounds and then just taking care of the basketball, keeping teams out of transition. So, if you take away those easy baskets, you know, in those two regards, then you're going to be in every game. And so when you're shorthanded, those are the things you got to take, you know, uh, take control of and not let teams, you know, get easy baskets. Hey, Ty. Um, would you like to see Luke Kennard in the three-point contest in All-Star Weekend in Cleveland? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> How do you think he'd do? I think he'd do great. Do, do, for him, like you're always looking for him to shoot, right? Um, like, would an experience like that kind of like add a little, like bolster him a little bit more? Or, or what oh, do you for think? sure. I think if he goes in, you know, he's able to do it. I think um, to win a three point shooting contest would give him a lot of, like I said, you know, um, a lot more confidence, you know, coming back to the team. And like we stay on Luke about turning down shots. And um, I read a lot, you know, from Spo, um, we did the Duncan Robinson. Every time he turned down a shot, they'll take him out of the game. You know, so his job is to shoot the basketball. And, you know, if he's turning down shots, it's going to be tough for him to really be on the floor. So we need, we need him taking those shots. Okay, right on. Hey, Ty, um, I'm just curious, like, how you view this. So, like, there, there's times where, like, Terrence uh, has looked confident and, and, you know, in his shot. And there's times like that Denver game where he's, like, he passed up a three that you guys kind of want him to shoot. Like, do you kind of see – that confidence wavering in that shot? Like, how do you kind of judge what you see from him with some of those shots? Because it looks like he's confident in some and then not really confident in others. Um, I don't know why. I mean, he's shooting 38% from three. So um, he can really shoot the basketball. He works on it every single day. So um, just being confident you know, in the work he's put in. And so um, we, we stay on him about turning down shots, especially the open ones. You know, he has to take those shots because of 24 seconds, you know, in a possession, if you don't take the really good shot, then you're probably going to get a worse shot. So, um, but he's going to be okay. Um, he's doing a lot better. And like I said, starting these last few games, it really is getting his confidence up. Are you going to do the thing you did with uh, Luke where you might have to pull him from a game if he doesn't take a shot? No, not for that. <laughs> Just Luke. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Ty. Yeah. Uh, Justin, finish us off. <laughs> Hey, Coach, uh, you know, a month ago, you said if you were given the same team for four or five games, you'll be able to figure out how to win, whether it's ugly or whatever. You know, the last four games, you're three and one. You've had a similar roster each of the four games. Is that kind of like what you feel would have happened if there wasn't so much um, upheaval throughout the season? I mean, yeah, I think once, you know, I have a team for four or five games, like I said, you know, I'd be able to adjust. And um, my coaching staff does a great job of being able to adjust and just you know, play with who we have on the floor. And so you got to get the best out of the guys that are playing. And so if I see it for three or four games, like I'll, I'll be able to adjust and might win 70 to 69, might win 130 to 129. But, um, you know, it just, you got to do whatever it takes to win. Like I said, our guys are on board with that as well. Thanks.